uh, we're going to do this sort of a Q and A format. Me questioning Jay a lot, uh, but adding uh, you know some insights here and there. But I think uh, a, a good spot for us to get started, Jay, is maybe you could describe a little bit where where you use Airflow at PayPal. Sure, Ray. Um, good morning, everyone, and happy to be here. You know, last year at PayPal, you know, we took up this embarked it, uh, we embarked it on this journey of creating our next generation of data pipeline. And it's a, it's a big complex, uh, you know, overall architecture. And, you know, we use Apache Goblin there. The blog has, uh, you know, we, the blog is out there on the PayPal technology blogging site. And, uh, you know, the more detail is there. But there is a very specific information that I want to use here is the, you know, the principles that we use there, the principle and guideline that we follow there. Uh, you know, in a, in a very big piece of uh, um, data platform, there's often many component interacts with each other, right? And one of the principles we really tightly followed is the roles and responsibility of each of these component. So we use like, you know, many, many, uh, you know, tools and utilities and platform components in the overall platform. Um, being like, for example, the Apache Goblin uh, is one of the data mover, right? Uh, there are REST services for onboarding experiences. There are UI component, things like that. But then there was a central piece uh, needed for you know orchestrating, like uh, almost as a as a control plane of this data platform, where we can you know manage things, control things, and you know even for operations can you know manage all the pipelines. That's where we really needed a scheduler, a workflow scheduler and someone who can basically make all the decisions when it wants to, right? So that, you know, it, it doesn't get pushed down to like some of the, the very specialized component like Goblin. So Goblin is a data mover and, and we want to make sure that, you know, it doesn't do anything besides the movement. So that's where we really use Airflow as a, as a central component that glues in other components and make sure, you know, the, the job is done end to end. Nice. Yeah, and so um, one of I, I remember reading. I think that's I, I reached out to you after I read that Goblin, you know, plus Airflow uh, post um, uh, last year. And um, one of the things I was really curious to find out from you is, you know, we obviously believe at Astronomer that Airflow is very central to a data platform. And I, one of my first questions to you, I remember, was, you know, do you see that? Do you see it as central or on the edge? And uh, you know, maybe talk a little bit about that, like whether, you know, just from a mental model standpoint, where does airflow fit in, in the, in the um, you know, constellation of tools that are being used? <laughs> right, I think, you know, being being a scheduler uh, and, you know, and, and really abstract to what, what task it is executing and the underlying business logic, it's, it's really, you know, uh, something that, that has to sit in the central component, right? Which can, which can talk to not only let's say the REST services, but also some of the data components like Spark and then Goblin and multiple other tools. And then also at the same time, uh, you want to be integrated with monitoring tools and alerting, all of that, right? So it's really a central point. And, and with an Airflow, uh, it also gives you a operational control at one point, one place, right? Imagine if this all of this place uh, um, process is running independently, the operations, it will be a nightmare for operations team to maintain this, right? So at the central place, when and especially with the UI, it's very easy, and uh, you know you can imagine the SOP uh, for operation folks that you know simply go and restart the things there, right? So it it really makes it easy for uh, not only for developers to just see everything's together, but also for operations. I think for us it was the bigger benefit we see is at, at operation level when you are dealing with uh, we are not we are talking about like thousands of workflow here. So you know, it really makes it easy for operations. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, so. There's there's obviously lots of um, options for scheduling, you know, including mm -hmm. you know straight straight cron, and I'm sure you guys did that for a while at some yeah. point. Uh, um, and maybe we just go like category by category, but maybe talk about why why you chose Airflow over other tools. You know, maybe in general, like what what were some of the things you guys saw about Airflow that maybe let's talk about the pros of airflow first sure um you know I'll, I'll take a minute maybe to you know start with like you know when we originally started looking at airflow this is back in 2017 actually and you know paypal being very supportive about you know being uh you know part of the open source community we often try to contribute back and stuff we we don't want to you know reinvent the wheels for sure <laughs> so we 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 had a um 
a small project that basically orchestrate the entire Hadoop node remediations, uh, you know, platform. Um, that's where we originally used Airflow, and that's where since then we are we are exploring Airflow very heavily, right? So we are contributing back to the team uh, community and you know uh, learning from the Airflow as well, in general. Well, having said that, as you mentioned, you know, there are many uh, schedulers and, you know, many ways of doing things, right? One of the very big thing that I particularly like is that it very well integrates with the other open source projects. So if your stack, the data stack is open source stack, then, you know, it naturally fits in there. Uh, this is compared to some of the legacy and commercial tools. Um, it, there are also other points like the integrations with other components are very readily available. Like, you know, almost all cloud provider has its operators contributed to Airflow. So you want to run anything on cloud, it's just right away available. There are, I just noticed that there are like 100 plus operators available on Airflow, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so many of them people have built on their side. So that, this is a very rich ecosystem that, you know, uh, puts a lot of confidence that, you know, this is going to stay for long and, you know, will be, able to achieve things with the uh, least uh, effort, we'll be learning from community, and then, you know, we, we also uh, contribute back. In in terms of, uh, the, but, you know, at, at the same time, you also, you know, notice that there are newer open source projects in this area, right? Yeah. Uh, the workflow scheduler has become a, you know, it, it's just a very intuitive and, and uh, you know, obvious that it has become a very central part of the, the overall data, data ecosystem. So in the ecosystem right now, you cannot think of that stack without a workflow executor. And there are some uh, niche products and niche, uh, you know, uh, problems that uh, you know, people have tried to solve using a, another kind of, you can say, fork of an Airflow with similar concept, uh, you know, um, influenced by the Airflow. Um, but, you know, th those are, those are the uh, one that we see that as uh, something that solves very niche problem. And Airflow remains still at a very generic level. Mm -hmm. So even though we talk most of the time nowadays, Airflow in terms of data pipeline, in the context of data pipeline, we, we see it as a, as a generic workflow executor for us. So we, we build a data pipeline, we have other stuff into it. You know, you can do anything that can, that basically requires anything like an if TTT kind of workflow, right? If this and that. So um, it, it I, I believe that Airflow do have a potential to uh, remain as a generic workflow executor, and then you know it can do potentially a lot more in this same area. Yeah, I think that that's you know the the what happened was Airflow grew you know kind of under the radar for a number of years with lots of people contributing operators and hooks and everything. Um, and when you tried to like, there was no way to like contain them to a certain domain at, at that point, right? Um, We've recently tried to build a, um, a website, the Astronomer Registry, to to just like basically provide a, a search engine for them because you know there was a time where most of those were inside the the Airflow repo, but more and more they're they're being contributed from the community and and right. not even you know put inside of the the main repo. So um, yeah, if you haven't seen the registry, uh, listeners, uh, check it out. It's we're we're trying to share like example DAGs and and so on. A lot of them have been contributed into those repos. They're just kind of hard to discover unless you know where to look. Um, yeah, and so. you know, that's a great point actually, right? That, you know, um, the the air, the hub really gives you the operators that is proven and tested. And that yeah. really matters because, you know, it's very easy to build, let's say, BigQuery operator. Mm -hmm. But when you have that something that, you know, tons of people are using it, you, you definitely know that it's production ready. It's yeah. almost ready. Obviously, you got to check to yourself uh, for yeah. your use case, but you know, uh, you, you, it puts a lot of confidence, uh, you know, for any developer that, you know, it will be uh, having a least amount of bugs. So yeah, it really sure. expedites the overall developer life cycle uh, for a product. And, and I think that's a, I think that's a very generic, uh, probably for any open source uh, mature project. Yeah, maybe we'll talk a little bit about this later, but, you know, I think there's an interesting, uh, I wouldn't call it a collision, but like with CICD, you know, there are more and more people are trying to do data, data work inside of a traditional like CICD system, which is a workflow engine as well. And a lot of times it's directed and acyclical. So therefore, you know, we're, we're seeing some potential for collision with those tools, but we'll talk about that maybe near the end um, as, as far as like other tools go. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All right. So, 
I'm curious, like what what other tools do you do you see you know pair nicely with Airflow? Obviously Goblin, but you know <laughs> uh, what else are you? What else do you think about that? Yeah, actually, uh, Apache Goblin does not um, by default comes with something that can integrate readily with uh, Apache Airflow. We made it uh, uh, possible actually. So we we, uh, we we build that piece, the integration with an Airflow. Um, the the required interfaces and goblin and stuff like that we all kind of you know built that and and that really um, um, gave a gave a good return on our investment there because we were able to you know centrally um, integrate with the with a lot of other platforms because we use airflow for other stuff too and you know that makes uh, you know doesn't basically keeps us on the same path and you know doesn't introduce too many tools for our operations team right so you know we can now do everything uh, majority of things on airflow um but you know as you rightly said there there are a lot of other tools that integrates nicely with airflow uh, i think one of the good advantage of airflow is that you know it's a python which has its own very low barrier for anybody to just you know write and and contribute uh, as compared to some other uh, and or if you look at the spectrum, uh, there are some high barrier languages which you know would would not be so easy to point with. And um, every other provider uh, also has the good libraries, you know, that can uh, be easily integrated. So we have seen Spark is very nicely integrated. Some of the cloud components, as I mentioned earlier, almost all of the cloud provider has their operators, the top components, top service operators uh, available in uh, Airflow. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, I think the data lineage and, and the metadata tools are, you know, really trying to integrate with Airflow because, you know, now the Airflow becoming a, a backbone of uh, as an ETL or data pipeline in many companies, you know, it, it is very natural to, you know, if you can just do the integration with Airflow, it just, you know, gives you a lot more insights into what's going on on day to day basis on ETL pipelines. So those those are some of the I think the newer components are also trying to uh, you know integrate with them. Uh, we uh, on our side we also did a good integration with some of the monitoring and metrics tools um, mm -hmm. like Influx CV and uh, you know uh, Splunk and other other providers. Um, the REST API was was uh, was there already right. Uh, those those integration was rock solid. We we heavily used them um, and you know uh, yeah some of these these are very useful. Yeah, I, on the on the lineage side, and metadata side too. We've we've been working with uh, teams from like Data Hub and Abinson and others. Um, it's definitely a lot of activity there. There's there's a lot of opportunity to improve Airflow's. Um, uh, I, I would just say like how it deals with lineage data. Uh, so our team's been spending a little energy on that. Um, uh, it's an exciting uh, area for sure. Um, I'd also mention like you know Google. If, in particular has done such a great job of making sure every service they have is uh, has got an airflow um, uh, operator for it. So um, we expect the other major clouds will will follow suit and, and provide very broad support for all their all their tools as time goes on. Um, yeah, all right, well, cool. So uh, what do you, um, are there other schedulers or orchestrators though that you guys use? Um, in, in addition to Airflow, um, like um, and and maybe you know compare and contrast why Airflow over other tools and or those other tools over Airflow in certain situations. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, we've been a, a company for a long time, right? And and yeah. we we have started. Obviously, um, the cron was definitely um, uh, used at one point um, in the beginning. Obviously, right. And and there are many commercial offerings. Uh, we we do use uh, products like UC4, Control M, um, yeah. many other schedulers inside. Uh, the data platform, particularly, you know, um, is open. Uh, obviously, more um, more or in, inclined towards uh, open source because you know the Hadoop is ecosystem itself makes it very uh, you know usable with open source technology. And as I said, you know, we we also um, try to embrace the open source technology. Um, you know the technology platform organizations in PayPal particularly you know supports uh, open source definitely um, so that's a good part yeah yeah um, obviously the fact that you know Airbnb was using Hadoop when uh, the whole thing got started made it the Hadoop support 
uh, nice early on. Um, right. Cool. All right. Well, maybe maybe we could just shift gears a little bit and talk about you know uh, what airflow. What are some of the airflow use cases? Um, in particular, like what are you guys doing, and you know, in more specificity uh, at, at PayPal, and we could talk about what others are doing. I could I could probably talk a little bit about what people are doing outside of PayPal, but why don't, why don't we start with some of your? Because I think you guys have some some interesting use cases that you've told me about. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I would like to share like one of the use cases that we that uh, I I I used Airflow originally, uh, and and that was a bit of a, a different use case than than the traditional nowadays that we are seeing. Yeah. Uh, I, as I briefly mentioned over earlier, was a was a platform of Hadoop remediation platform. So um, you know, uh, every big companies <clears throat> now have a very big installations of uh, Hadoop clusters or Spark clusters in thousands of nodes, right? And and these nodes are having having like so much uh, large capacity of storages, have multiple multiple disks. So for a small operations team, it is very, very hard to manage those, uh, manage the hardware failures. And, and you know, Hadoop is resilient. So, and, you know, it will handle the handle the failure nicely. Um, and, you know, you, it will not impact the job. But, you know, it, it actually definitely reduces the overall capacity. If you have like 10% of the nodes down in your Hadoop cluster, you know, you're basically running as a 10% less capacity. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if your disks are bad, you know your jobs are running slowly. It will retry the task, but you know it will. So, so it definitely makes sense to keep the healthier level more than ninety percent all the time. In terms of you know the infrastructure, we we thought of this as an opportunity to kind of you know automate this uh, you know uh, through Airflow like workflow, where the workflow can basically detect all the bad nodes and bad disks, and you know it takes it out of the live Hadoop cluster. From production Hadoop cluster, and then you know, uh, kind of send it uh, to repair to vendors through their vendor ticketing system. This is again where where the Jira operator that I added in Airflow originally and and back in 2018 was useful, yeah. um, right? And we we kind of you know um, integrate with the vendor system once they kind of you know repair and you know thinks that this is good, then, you know we'll we'll take it back. The workflow will continue after a couple of days. And you know we test the system, we check it, burn testing, all of that, <clears throat> and and the node goes back to the system automatically. Mm-hmm. So this was this was a huge you know uh, evaluated uh, overall uh, for operations. Like you know with a small uh, operation thing, we were able to you know we the paper was managing like a very large installation of uh, Hadoop cluster. So this was a bit of a uh, different use case, but you know, again, you can see a um, l- lot of different tasks tying together and dependent on each other as a workflow. And I think um, the dependency management overall in general, not in just of workflow, but even in the data pipeline is, is something that, you know, I would, I would like to see, you know, uh, a good improvement in that area in Airflow itself. Hopefully uh, some people are, are talking about it already. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great, um, I think it's a great story and it's interesting. It's like your first use case was, was non-traditional. A a lot of people are obviously using airflow for, you know, orchestrating the ingestion like you guys are, but also transform transformations, preparing the data for analytics or preparing it for machine learning or even preparing it for, um, uh, consumption from their product, you know, like pushing uh, co- computations out to to real users uh, in a production application, you know, whether it's a web app or a mobile app, uh, you know, people are doing data prep behind the scenes using Airflow um, uh, for sure. And I would say that's probably the what I consider like the primary use case is is you know preparation for analytics uh, or or um, you know data processing. Um, I think you know another another area that's obviously growing is um, ML um, ML mm-hmm. pipelines and and there's a lot of tools like like you're saying like specialized tools that are, are that have been purpose built for this. Um, however, you know again anything that has a API or a Python library um, can be orchestrated with Airflow, and that's that's where as you mentioned, it being a, a great generic option. Um, 
you can do anything in Airflow that you can do with those other tools. Um, and, and there are some sort of economies of having all that stuff running in, in one orchestrator over, you know, right. using lo lots of little orchestrators. Right, and and you know one one important um, thing, and and this is my thought that I want to share with the community is that you know uh, the can do approach uh, is definitely possible for a lot of uh, tools. You can definitely do a lot of things in pretty much everything. Uh, so can do is different than should do, right? Yeah. And and, and I, I in this talk I wanted to focus on why we should be using Airflow then just because something can do it right like you, you we can have like you know quartz for example in java that can schedule this stuff and and you know right. whether we should do it or not is a question of and matter of you know architectural principles that we follow in general so yeah. airflow for us really you know keeps the architecture clean the the separation of concerns and roles and responsibilities are very well taken care of with this approach because today we are using, let's say, for example, a Hadoop job or a MapReduce job to do certain tasks, right? And tomorrow we can replace it with something else. Yeah. So that, if that, and then, you know, the progression in the data technology is continuous. And, you know, as that changes, it doesn't really has to change everything top down, right? So today it is Goblin, it can be something else. Tomorrow it can be Spark or, you know, the map is job itself, things like that. It yeah. can change, but the orchestration layer is is is, is the is a layer where you control almost of your your application logic or a business logic, what what happens, and you know people, different group of people and team can work on different components very easily without having tighter dependency. In general, we have seen that you know it basically expedites the overall delivery of software, and that that's the you know the ultimate results of all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and uh, I was just thinking like maybe I should share our initial use case. Astronomer's initial use case of Airflow was back when we were doing a different product. We were we had a Clickstream product, and um, I'll just say like what attracted us to Airflow was the the, the, the way we could build dynamic DAGs uh, with Python. You know, and that's I think it, like a lot of times people think of this as like oh, you could you can handcraft the Python script to do a thing and and that's certainly a, a standard standard use case but but what we did was we actually used um python to loop over database records you know and, and pretty con and create very complex dags you know one per customer and it would generate you know hundreds of these dags all from a single python file you know that was checked into source control um and it was just to us it was like by far the best way to 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 process all that work because humans weren't crafting the DAGs, the machine was crafting the DAGs, right? Mm -hmm. um, based on rules um, on what it saw inside these these database tables. So um, I would say like, it, it's really important to, to recognize that like the generation of DAGs from a Python, so you can use a Python script to generate many mm -hmm. DAG files. Uh, and that's, that was a, a huge, um, reason why we we went with airflow uh, was just because we had the meta programming capability that python brings you know to the table got it yeah we 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 certainly also have on our side a lot of innovative uh, things done at airflow for example yeah. you know um, the single call and rest call that does the onboarding automatically at the end re as an end result creates a dag that we deploy yeah automatically yeah. so all of these are you know it, it, it generates a DAG dynamically uh, but it's not a dynamic DAG feature of the airflow but it's just generates right. the code uh, right. that we can deploy as a DAG and you know there are many many other things that we have done interesting things uh, innovative things that you know we'll, we'll talk more hopefully in future yeah yeah we could we'll, we could talk more more about that too um, yeah, but I, the thing I, I discovered as as we started learning what other companies were doing with Airflow, especially you know usually at scale, there's almost always one example of where they're they've got a, a collection of things that they're looping over to generate DAGs. You know whether it's YAML files or whether it's database records, um, uh, et cetera. Um, so uh, yeah, we maybe we could um, shift gears to that. Like maybe we could talk a little bit about um, you know where. Airflow needs to go from here. Uh, we could talk about, um, yeah, and yeah. So that, that's a, that's a very interesting topic, and I'm, I'm sure community has has a lot of opinion about this. I see the chatter. You know, all the proposals. I think very good, and and you know, smart people working on this. So I'm sure 
we will be you know a uh, lot further than than today in 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 generally you know the capability that airflow is offering in terms of coverage and quality and all not from yeah. my my side you know from what i i use the airflow for and and what i'm familiar with the data platform i think that uh, the move towards a more generic uh, workflow execution engine is is you know the key for airflow and then people are smart enough to you know use it for their own need as they like um, but you know some of the feature that we really uh, felt <clears throat> missing and then we, we we invented on our site was was a way to uh, you know create a DAC template right something that mm -hmm. we you know somebody can design that for us and then you know the runtime we can we can use that and parameterize that configuration base we can we can create a new DACs out of it uh, some kind of a template and tree structure where you know it can basically facilitate the DAC creation automatically. Um, the, the also you know I I believe right now is a, there is a very low barrier in writing the code uh, or writing the DAG specifically in Python, but you know um, having something totally configuration based would be even nicer, right? Would be a, a step towards almost a no code, very low code, uh, you know, um, workflow creations. Right. Um, the UI has made a very good progress in the last couple of years in Airflow, but would be nice to see something very beautifully like, you know, um, drag and drop wizard kind of uh, UI where the data scientist can, can basically create their own workflow without having a dependency on, let's say, data engineer or any other, you know, coding uh, skills, right? So I think though there are definitely a lot more opportunities, I think, um, for Airflow to, to latch on. Uh, okay. But I'm sure uh, these are all the you know, top of the mind things uh, for the community. And I'm sure Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I, I think as some of, as, as, as we, we need to add a few more features, like for example, DAG serialization, to me is like, it, we're getting, we're making progress on that, but once, once Airflow could accept a DAG, you know, uh, in, in via an API, for example, you can build new applications on top of that capability, you know, whether it's whether it's inside of Airflow proper or sitting next to it. The community has done, you know, there's there are YAML-based Airflow um, systems that the community has created, but they're they're still sitting off to the side. They're not part of the core Airflow promise, I should say. Um, so. Um, I think I think we need to continue to bring bring some of those things in. Um, you know, uh, Jay. You know, mentioned you, you, we've been talking a lot about the future of Airflow as, since you've become an advisor to Astronomer. Um, uh, so we appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, another area that w that we've been talking about are are these um, ad hoc and triggered. Um, uh, sort of use cases as well, which I, I know you said you guys do use triggers, um, but I still feel like it's it's not quite a first class citizen in Airflow, and we've been right. talking about that. But yeah, maybe talk about that for a second. Yeah, right. And and you know, um, because it's not a first class citizen, we had to build a significant infrastructure and and logic around it, and we have our own way of you know figuring out um, when to trigger, when to do things. Right. All of these decisions are are made at Airflow level, but still it has its own DAG that makes its decisions when to trigger certain uh, DAG uh, for a certain data sets. So <clears throat> um, the, tr the triggering thing for us mainly comes um, and, and become a need because of the dependency management we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of time, you don't really own the workflow end-to-end -end yourself. You may depend on others to execute something, and then based on that, you will trigger that. So the scheduling way uh, only works for a smaller use cases where you own end-to-end -end things and, and you know that you are going to run it every 10, 10 minute or an hour. Um, but in a large company environment or in a, you know, many team dependency environment, uh, you often depend on others' workflows. So these, mm -hmm. are something, these are some of the things uh, we had to innovate on um, to put a dependency management on Airflow. <clears throat> that certain things happens, and then based on that, we we detect that mechanism, um, and then you know trigger our own DAG. Uh, of course, uh, this is all programmatic, but you know we did had to put a significant amount of code to deal with this uh, reliably. Uh, this is something another area, a big area that you know uh, probably can help uh, a lot of use cases and, and tie in even more use cases 
if uh, the airflow can have a dependency management right built into it every task can can define those criteria and conditions uh, very um, not only at a superficial level but uh, also deep down either you know either with a metadata service or linear services to to you know um, satisfy and move on uh, to mm -hmm. execute the task itself yeah it kind of gets into sensors and um, so on <laughs> but, but yeah um, cool uh, well um, I, I think we talked a little bit too about you know the need for for enterprise support I remember uh, you know talking with uh, others at PayPal even early on that you know one of the determinations around when to use airflow versus a commercial tool is if it's mission critical it feels more correct to use a commercial tool right <laughs> yeah i think every every product has its own use cases definitely um the airflow basically uh, you know really gives an advantage for a uh, you know the, the the quick pocs and you know the quick delivery and yep. that is where the where the key is but we have we've seen i mean i i from my experience it is still in uh, in the area where when we use airflow it, it often ends up in a devops model where the mm -hmm. team is maintaining their own stuff right it's not of a, something that gives uh, bells and whistles and and, and the, the controls and interfaces that other teams can then start taking over right so uh, in a large moment i think that that is often needed um uh, you know that you know someone is building stuff and someone is maintaining and yeah. you know that requires a lot more um enterprise level features um you know so i'm sure astronomer is looking at uh, some of those yeah. enterprise level features there yeah that's i mean i think that's when we get called in is when um you know the, the initial team that's using airflow and they're running their own airflow is asked to run somebody else's airflow and they're like uh time out i, I don't want to be running your airflow I, you know we're cool to run our own barely uh but um yeah so i, I think that, that just having having a, a vendor to depend on for um just the reliability and you know sort of like an insurance policy um uh it, it's a nice thing um yep. so yeah, and I'm I'm also hoping um, you know Airflow to become not only a a central component in a in a single data stack, but also a central component in general among the cloud and within the cloud. So mm -hmm. we may have, let's say, if you have an installation in Google Cloud or Azure or AWS, you you may have the installation of Airflow that basically is controlling every other activities, right? Yeah, uh, and majority of the daily processes, but uh, not only within the e individual cloud, but you know, um, we are also hearing a lot of uh, strategies around multi-cloud, and mm -hmm. that that can you know um, uh, be facilitated, and you know, Airflow can be a, a another gluing factor there and central component uh, to yeah. to you know handle these scenarios. Yeah, we could use that gap comment to promote our talk, uh, Greg uh, Greg Neheisel and I, founders of Astronomer, doing a talk on Tuesday about. Uh, multi-cloud airflow and the future of our products. So if, uh, yeah, tune in on that if, you, if that area is interesting.